one of the reasons that getting rich sucks is I think it tries to kick you out the first five years. It's like, how committed are you? Yes. I'm going to try to trip you and push you and knock you over. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, most people are going to fall for it and go, oh, not for me. Mm -hmm. But some of us dust ourselves off, put a Band-Aid on, and just keep going. I want to talk about the process of getting rich sucking. Yes, folks, it sucks. It's hard. It's painful. There are lots of twists and turns, thorns, piles of stuff in the ground. It is not necessarily an easy journey. And I thought I would have this conversation with someone who's been on this journey and has completed it. He's just retired as of tomorrow, I think. Yes. Uh, the one and only Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it's, um, it is. it is Tomorrow's the last day of uh, of logging into an email. Tomorrow is the last. <laughs> tomorrow is the last day of not owning my own calendar. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, it's exciting. But yeah, I mean, very often you know, and I think you see it a lot on your videos too, where you post and and you're know, just talking about you know being a landlord and what we do. <clears throat> and one of the one of the challenging things is is that a lot of people, you know, the especially on shorts, right? People post all over the place, and they're just like, get a real job. You're a leech. You suck. You're a parasite you know, you're the one that's screwing up housing, all this other stuff, the silliness and the nonsense, because they don't understand simple economic theory. But <clears throat> I think the challenge is, is that it sucks, not just from the detractors or that, but it sucks because how many people watch our stuff that still are in a W2 job nine to five every single day. And that this is how they get to spend their free time. Mm -hmm. And so it's really an investment in yourself, but getting rich, man, it sucks. It sucks. The journey sucks, but you have to embrace it because otherwise you won't get there. You just won't get there. Yeah. One of the, I mean, there's a couple of sayings that sometimes when I see them, I kind of chuckle, but they're also extremely valid and true. And, you know, getting rich sucks, but life can suck, right? I mean, choose yeah. your hard, right? Getting yeah. rich is hard, but, you know, working at W2 is hard, right? It, the one thing that I remember early in the journey, it, I don't know about you, but, you know, I always thought a million bucks was rich, right? That yeah, was, sure. Was, Agreed. You know, when I was growing up, Gen X, a million bucks was the number, right? And I got to tell you, I, I probably said it, but I never really, I don't know that I believed it, mm -hmm. that I would get there, right? I had nobody in my circle, my family, that was a millionaire. I, I yeah. didn't know. I, didn't, I don't think I knew anybody that was worth half a million bucks. Yep. Uh, money wasn't talked about. So it was always kind of that, you know, maybe fake it till you make it or say it out loud. But I don't, I don't know that I really believed it was possible. And one yeah. of the things I had to do is I had to change my circle. Yes. Right. And I don't think enough people realize that your circle is, is, it's, it's holding you back. It's a limiting belief. Uh -huh. You really are back to that, you know, back to, you know, choose your hard kind of idea, but you really are the collection of your five closest friends. Uh -huh. And I said this, the I, th I said this yesterday when somebody was interviewing me, it's like, you don't understand. My, my circle of friends entirely changed after I left my W2 again, right? I'm, I'm constantly evolving who I lit in, in around me. Sure. And I think there's a lot of people in the beginning. They're not getting new friends. You need new friends. You need a new circle. What do you think? A hundred percent agree. That was the biggest mistake I made was not having that evolve. Um, I think that because I'm, you know, thick headed, um, difficult, uh, abrasive are the, you know, <laughs> the, probably the three top. You're a, teddy, you're a teddy bear, man. Come on. For, for people that I like, yeah. For people yeah. that I like, I'll do anything for you. For people that are you know not there yet with me or just general passerby, you mm -hmm. know, quite frankly, I'm I'm cordial, but if you're rude to me, then I, yeah, you're, you're going to find <laughs> out. <laughs> I <talk. laughs> yeah, you're going to find out real quick. Um, but I think, you know, for me, it was, that was the biggest mistake I made, I think, was um, because I'm broken, uh, mm -hmm. because I'm really driven, because I love the power of the word no, uh, people for nonstop my entire life, it's been no. 
You know, mm -hmm. it was, you're not going to be anything because you're a ninth grade dropout. You're never going to get right. a job because you're a ninth grade dropout. You're never going to get promoted because you don't have a college education. You're mm -hmm. never going to get that executive position because you don't have an MBA. Um, well, you guys can all suck it because I've had yeah. all of them. Right. And I was, and I was elite at all of them. And here's the thing that chip on my shoulder served me well, um, works great in the real world. Doesn't work very well in marriage. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's why there's two different me's, you know? Um, but I think to your point though, changing that circle of friends, um, I fully expect my circle of the, the, the three, three out of the five people that I talk to the most every single day are now going to change. Yeah. Uh, I, my I, life I, is going to change completely yeah. change, but, and but, that, and that's okay. It is. It is okay. I think that was the problem for me is, is I don't love change. Uh, right. I don't yeah. love change. And so it's weird being an entrepreneur and uh, not liking change. Like that's why I'm so broken. I'm just, you know, like <laughs> I'm a walking riddle, you know, but I don't, I don't like change, but at the same time too, I recognize when it's needed. And so mm -hmm. to your point of that circle of friends, I didn't have any friends that were real estate investors. I didn't have any friends that could understand getting that, you know, 9 PM phone call. I didn't have any friends that understood. I would get my balls busted by my family about yeah. having to leave another event because something happened with a tenant. Well, I was broke. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford $120 to $5 an hour plumber. I couldn't afford that. I had to go right. do it myself. And so it does a couple of things for you. It does make you more self-reliant. Mm -hmm. It does give you courage to try more and to expand your horizons. Um, but it also, if you're not careful, can harden you, mm. you know, so it's good to be battle tested. It's good to be battle hard, but you can't be like that with everything and with everyone and all the time. Yeah. And so yeah. that's definitely part of the sucking is some people need a little bit of hardness in their life, you know, and mm -hmm. some people that's, what's going to turn them away from it and have them go. I just don't want to be that person because right. how many landlords did you see? You saw it with your first experience. Dion saw it with his. Mm -hmm. I saw it with uh with two out of my first six. Yeah. You just stop paying. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? You're not like filing paperwork on the fifth day like you would now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, you're trying to work it out. Hey, I just want to work this out with you. Let's yeah. let's try and meet, let's try and find something that works for both of us. And then you realize it's the big old middle finger. They don't want to work it out with you. They're just gonna squeeze you. That's all they because they, yeah. they don't think they don't think what you do is important. Yeah, I think there's I mean. I don't know when I when I started on this journey and we had one or two homes, and I think I've said this before, my vision was four. Yeah, right? maybe five. Yep. Yeah. I I could not think bigger than that. And yep. as I sit here right now having this conversation with you, both of us have over a hundred doors. I wonder, I actually wonder if it was a good thing. Because four or five always seemed achievable. I wonder if I was sitting there with Norris Drive and Ferris and Terrace, these are just street names in my first couple of houses. Mm -hmm. If my vision was a hundred units, I don't know if I would have kept that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. It, it never, um, I don't think it's ever really that for guys with a W2 first. Okay. I think it's that way for guys without the W2s because mm -hmm. they have to get the mass in order to they get, get the scale. income, no. right? Okay. They have to scale in order to get income. So for guys like us, good jobs, um, crazy commitment jobs, yes. you know, yeah. high, high commitment jobs. When we look at that, short, I think- Short fuse, short fuse, can't do it forever. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. You know, like it's, uh, for those of you who don't know, high tech sales and the high tech industry, it's like dog years. Like oh, if you've put 20 years in, you're 140 years old because you're living your life a quarter at a time. And if you miss yeah. one quarter, you get put on a performance improvement plan. And then if you don't follow through on that quarter, then you're gone. So mm -hmm. you're never, you're never, no matter how much you're like, no matter how good you are at what you do, you're never more than, you're never less than six months away from being gone. Thankfully, yeah, yeah. you and I both had amazing careers. I never got pipped, not in my mm -hmm. entire career. Um, but at the same time too, it was just like, you want to reach that cruising altitude, right? Everything right. you're trying to do is trying to reach that cruising altitude. And so when, as we're, as people are investing, I don't think anybody with a W2 goes, I'm going to get to a hundred doors. I really don't. I think everybody I with a W2 not. looks at, no, I think, cause I think you're right. I think that that would discourage a lot of people because they would see how hard the first five are. 
<laughs> and then they're like, multiply that times oh, 20, and you're like, yeah, kill me now. Yeah, no thanks. I'll, I'll go back and put in my 401k. I'm good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I think that, I think you're exactly right. I think that, you know, in the very beginning, I was never thinking a hundred doors. I was just thinking, I, I need to make sure I have some sort of a plan because at 65, yeah, will retirement be there for me? That was that that was my vision. It was like I want to make 65 better. Yep. I want to have more options at 65. In fact, I'll go as far as to admit that I wanted to have the best retirement in my entire family at 65. Absolutely. That was, that was the goal, right? Um and, and I, I really do think that that having that goal of four or five really made a hundred possible, if that makes sense. It, no, it, absolutely. it was always one more deal. There was always one, yeah. more, one more, one. Right. More. And it was yeah. the other thing too, is like you see too, right? Like uh, when do guys in our industries and in high tech, when do we start to get really get paid in our forties? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. You you're make good, your teeth, you inside sales. Exactly. Engineer, whatever. You make you okay. Get a, you get a shot. You're making, yeah. yeah. You're making okay money in your twenties. You're making pretty good money in your thirties. But when you start to hit 40, like that's when everything accelerates and you start adding not additions, but multiplications, right? It's multiple value of income. And so that's what happened. It was the same thing for me. And then the, really the toughest thing about retiring for me was man alive. I've spent 26 years building relationships, building skills, learning markets, learning products, where I'm so dialed in that I will forget more about what I do in the industry than most other people will ever learn. I was a top five voice in what I did, spoke on national panels. Um, none so as exciting as our event this as your <laughs> event this this Sunday, where we'll Thank be you. on a panel again together. Um, but I, I look at that and I just say, you know, the toughest thing for me was after 25, 26 years of this, I'm giving up being elite at something to honestly never make an impact again in that world. Like I'm done. In yeah. That. No, it's, it's funny. I, um, so you, you, you planned your exit. Certainly yes. better than I did. Right. Certainly better. <laughs> well, better. anybody that planned an exit on any level planned it better than you did. <laughs> better than I did. Yeah. It's wild, <laughs> wild. But it was funny. It took me probably 45 days to really recognize yeah. that I was never going to take a software product from zero to a hundred. I did it three times. It's an exhilarating ride. It is. My it is. ego was wrapped up in it. I was <clears throat> highly rewarded. Certainly by the time I did it a third time and I had to give that up. Yeah. I, I really did have to, I, I had to like purposely go, I'm never going to do that again. Mm -hmm. And I had to be okay with it. Yeah. That was probably some of my darkest days because I, again, didn't know what else to do. I see that. I totally see that with where it is now for me today. There's still a part of me, even though I'm walking away tomorrow, that's sad. There's still a part of yeah. me that's walking away tomorrow that's sad. And it's, and it's taking that product where, you know, this was a product that I worked on for uh, almost two decades of my life. Wow. And did it with, <clears throat> with, owners that didn't want to invest in the product my marketing budget was uh was less than a tenth of one percent of our, our revenue oh wow that's not, <clears throat> which that's you, that's not good you can't grow it you can't really yeah. grow it and so but for me it was about the employees around us it was about the the thing that we were doing as a business the impact that we we're making in the healthcare community that was really what was my driver so it had to it had to shift for what was the value of what I was doing? So mm -hmm. the challenging part is now it's more difficult to walk away because it felt more like a mission mm. than it did an income. And that's exactly where I had to go. I had to go find the next mission. Yeah. Hence what you and I now call one rental at a time. But let's go back to the journey sucking for folks. Because again, I want to talk about those early years because I see a lot of people in the comments, a lot of people in all of our networks taking those first couple of steps and skinning their knees, you know, getting, you know, the cut finger or whatever it is. It's hard, right? Yeah. I had plenty of mistakes those first years. I ran numbers, perhaps too rosy. Uh, I band-aided things versus replaced them, which always came back to bite me. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, maybe didn't do inspections in the first couple of things that fit me. I see a lot of folks that are like, that just need to be reminded. I, this is something I truly believe and see, see if what you think. Yeah. One of the reasons that getting rich sucks is I think it tries to kick you out the first five years. It's like, how committed are you? Yes. I'm going to try to trip you and push you and knock you over. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, most people are going to fall for it and go, oh, not for me. Mm -hmm. But some of us dust ourselves off, put a Band-Aid on, and just keep going. I mean, we uh, those first five years, I had all kinds of stumbles and issues and crap happen. Yeah, a thousand percent agree. It, it's... There was, um, there was very little fun about it in my first five years. Very little. Um, I also went bankrupt three times. Yeah. I'm, I'm a math guy. And so when I look at the balance sheet and I go, okay, $21,000 in the next 30 days is due. And I've got 6k of income. This is going to be, <laughs> quite the, this is going to be quite the trick. Um, <clears throat> and you know, it wasn't a bunch of fake things like minus depreciation or, you know, mm. these fake things. It was real dollars. And so looking at it that way, it was like, okay, I mean, you get really creative, like opening up credit cards and opening up home equity lines. Like I did everything. What it does is it a lot of times forces you to become a survivor. Yeah. That almost kick out thing. I totally agree with you. You have to fight to survive. You know, yeah, I, you have to fight. Like, I, I really think it does. Like, I do think getting rich is a relatively simple process. Mm-hmm. I didn't say it was easy. I said right. it was simple, right? Yeah. The process of getting rich has been well documented for years, right? Live below your means. Sure. Become a lead at something, buy assets to produce cash flow and hold for 10 years. The, the, pro the process is simple. It's it, The game, the game tries to trick you and punish you and it, it bring new, you know, I remember there were a couple of people buying properties when I was in 2010, which is, was the best year in my market for 50 some years. Uh -huh. By 2011, they got cocky. They got yeah. stupid. Yeah. They started borrowing all the equity. They started doing, you know, second home nonsense and they were forced sellers. And it's like, no, you don't deserve that. You don't, you don't win a marathon by running 18 miles. Right. Finish the damn thing. Right. And there's just so many. I see a lot of people get started. The first five miles kicks them out. Not for me, blah, blah, blah. Then you get halfway and then you stop. Then you get to the 20th mile and you pick up a drug, ha drug habit or you get divorced or just some other big right turn and you fall off. It's like, man, you're almost there. So it's just, it never stops. And the other thing I was looking at, because I did a video about home prices, recessions and unemployment. You and I's journey to getting rich, three recessions. Yeah. They're just part of it. <clears throat> and think... and the worst one since the Great Depression, you might add. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The two of them, the one of them was the V-shaped recovery. So we'll just write that one off. But the first two that we went through, they kicked they kicked our butts. Dude, they like were the, brutal. The dot com brutal. one? I mean, dang. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I mean, you I and I are both in tech. I, yeah, I went from an IPO, literally, dude. My company had filed to go public. Oh. And 9-11, uh, oh. we were laying off 30% of our staff like within 30 days. We had to get the burn rate down. We were no yeah. longer an IPO candidate. It got pulled. And we were sold for parts like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 months later. What I thought was going to be, you know, a thirty dollar, you know, or at the time they were options. They weren't our shoes. They were options. You know, I think it turned into like seventy seven cents. It's like, oh, okay, I'm glad glad I struggled for five years or whatever it was. It was it was yeah. crazy. Um, and that but recessions are part of the process too. They are. I mean, it's it's a, but it's it's funny too, right? It's a cleansing of the mm. system. It's a cleansing of the system. It's the people that shouldn't have bought that get crushed it's the people that shouldn't that don't have the wherewithal to stick like if you stick to almost anything for 20 years yeah. right you but you have to stick. chances you gotta yeah stick. exactly yeah. you gotta it, stick yeah and yeah. so what's you know the 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 best assets that we have right best meaning we can kind of do whatever we want because of a stable of assets mm -hmm. 
And it's the ones that you own for 20 years that have almost no debt left on them where you're getting ready to be like, I'm going to get a multi-million dollar payday just by re-levering these assets. Yeah. Like that's the time, that's the stuff that I could, honestly, that's the stuff I couldn't see. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't yeah. see that back when I started. I, you know, it was yeah. like, it was, I, so I just got a new credit report and it showed a uh, proportion of balances too high. Hmm. And the reason why was because I have 26 loans yeah. that recast less than two years ago, mm -hmm. but that's when I refied everything and pulled out millions of dollars to go buy more. Yeah. Yeah. And the debts, you know, for the large part, 30 year fixed, you know, below five. It is 30 year like, fixed and four. Oh, there you go. 30 oh. year fixed and four. And it's like, and who wouldn't buy any house they saw now, even at these prices at a 4% rate, yeah. like everybody would. Yeah. So again, the process, the, the process of getting rich is simple. I think it is, is pretty straightforward, but straightforward, it just, yeah. it, there, there'll be money things. There'll be people things. There'll be family things. Um, and again, I go back to your friends, right? One of the things that I, I'm looking forward to this weekend, you, you brought it up. We're going to be on stage together uh, Sunday. Um, <laughs> is there's going to be a lot of great relationships made in that room. You've got to get around people that are doing it. Oh, sure. Right? And it's funny. I don't know if you saw this, but I did a video in my gym just talking to my phone the other day, talking about four things, four negative things that happened. And I'll share them here just in case people didn't see them. But what the point is, is my mindset's entirely different. So I'll give you the four quickly. Yeah. Uh, I had to put a $35,000 roof on one of my buildings. Oh, uh, I had a tenant ghost me. Uh, I had an insurance policy cancel. And I had a tenant who didn't pay rent for nine months, got evicted, then called code enforcement on me. Right? So these four things all happened to me within the last 14 days. And all those things just said out loud scares people. Sure. And frankly, the first time <clears throat> they happened to me, they probably scared me as well. But this yes. is how I look at each of them now. Yep. That $35,000 roof, I've had budgeted for a long time. I bought the building in 06. It's now 2024. I, it wasn't a new roof when I bought it. So, hey, roofs go better. Budget. That's, have that's beautiful. You got 18 years out of somebody else's roof. Exactly. Right. So it came in about five grand more than I had thought when I put the money away. But, hey, it's part of the process. I have an emergency reserve. It's all good. And now I have a new roof that will probably live, probably survive until I sell the building. Agreed. Right? You, you do them once. Yep. So that's that, right? Just having just having reserves. Don't go, like, if you're buying stuff and you have nothing left in the kitty, you're an idiot because stuff breaks. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the tenant ghosting. I probably, in a go, what does it ghosting mean? That means no notice, no communication. They probably rent a U-Haul truck at night, fill it up and just leave. No notice, no forwarding address, nothing. They ghost. Um, so not good. Not going to bother trying to find them. It's not worth my time. I sent a team in to clean it. It was relatively okay. It was still like 2,500 bucks for cleaning and, and, and all of that. And we're going to put a new tenant in and the rent went up a hundred bucks. You know, I didn't Back give it a moment. Yeah. Yep. I would, I, what am I going to do? Sit here and, you know, skip trace and do all that stuff. No, it's like, fine. What if, if, I really do believe in karma, right? If you want to do that, it's going to, it's, you know, something's coming to you later. I'm going to deal with it and move on, get a new tenant. We had somebody in there within 14 days. That's awesome. Uh, maybe 15 days. So that's number two. Uh, number three, insurance policy being canceled. Uh, I've had two canceled in the last 60 days. I only had one canceled the first 20 years. So this is yeah. a California thing, right? Yeah, yeah, California definitely thing. a California thing. Yeah, for sure. And, um, <laughs> You can bitch about it. You can whine. You can do this. You can do that. I called the insurance broker who I have at the hub and said, give me a new policy. And guess what? My policies, one went up 40%, one went up 50%. Guess what? The buildings that those insurance policies are on are over up over 200%. So they should have been more expensive. And, you know, when you break down the insurance increase, uh, so one went from 900 to 1800. So that's a double. So that's an extra, I don't know. 70 bucks a month, 80 bucks a month, something like that. It, it's, you know, what are you going to do? Not insure your building? I mean, come on. 
Yeah, no, you have to. Yeah. What, what's what's the purpose? <clears throat> uh, and then the last one, the one that probably would freak people out the most is when a tenant who didn't pay rent for nine months, who you spent about 1500 bucks getting evicted, then has the joy to kick you one more time and call code enforcement. Again, that happens to you, you could be freaking out. I'm like, good. I want code enforcement to go through the unit. I Absolutely. will hold my property manager accountable if there's anything wrong. I'm not a slumlord. I I love Section 8 inspections. I love code enforcement going through. So I want to know when something's not right. And, of and course. I dude, I haven't seen one of my units in five years. It's crazy. Five years. So yeah, I, I'm like, bring it on. And oh, by the way, any anything that gets identified, we will fix immediately and go yep. above and beyond. So again, just change the mindset. And um, again, I will look at it as an opportunity to, you know, hey, property manager, see all that money I'm spending you? That should not happen, right? right. What, what, where, where's the failure to communicate? Sure. Um, so again, just you kind of, if you're going to be in this game, all four of those things I talked about would freak out a new investor. Yes. I just want you to realize they're part of the game. Yep. They're part of the game. So what do you think of all that? Uh, I totally agree. I, I did my live stream this last Sunday on I saying I retired and mm -hmm. the same week that I retired, I got, um, I got sued twice and audited. Oh, fun. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> what? I mean, yes, I'm going to have more time. I thought anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, but we'll consume but, that right now. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, is like to your point with the insurance <clears throat> for 21 years, I'd never been sued. Mm. And I got my first lawsuit and we won, we crushed. In fact, they actually got a settlement against them oh, that they you know. have to pay. Mm. Um, and so I, I honestly, I expect that much the same will come of these um, largely because I think they're frivolous. I think they're people grasping at straws, but does it still make your heart skip a beat? Does it still oh. make your mind go, what the hell? Yeah. Does it, it that still happens. Yeah. Sure. And the, the thing is, is it's that it's, you know, knowing that we've gotten through as much as we've gotten through to get to the point that we've gotten to today, where a $35,000 roof, no one loves writing that check, but the no. fact that 10 is a completely different world. You know, yeah, the fact not, that, let's talk about it. Not only yeah. could I, I could write it from several different accounts. It's not a sure. brag reality but the important part is i have an account with at least 30 grand of it it's been sitting there waiting for this because roofs yeah. go back they do right they do and that's and that's where i think the you know slow and steady slow is smooth and smooth is fast i like how i built my business slow i like how we did it with the house hack i like that we eventually got you know we were doing the house hack and then also buying buildings that we weren't going to live in like, I like that I built my business slowly, slowly, conservatively. I didn't need the market to go up like it did the last three years. I didn't need the market to, you know, the the five year uh, from what was it? 08 to 2012, that five year period where all their stuff went down. That's why I laugh at these people that think that they're going to get anywhere with the appreciation story. If we ever get hit with anything like that ever again, you are screwed beyond belief and you will lose everything. Um, and quite frankly, if you're buying only for appreciation, you don't understand how businesses work. Um, and so this is a business. So I look at that, Mike, and I just say, man, alive, you know, when one person out of five didn't pay, that would rock my world because that was all of my profit. Right. Right. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, so we've got a couple of people that are on the list of not paying that we're going to go through an eviction process with. We've got, now we're getting sued by two people. Now we've got the audit that we have to spend time on and go through. At the end of the day, it was really funny. My wife, um, she sat down and she's like, hey, uh, I have something I need to tell you about. And I was like, okay, what's up? And she goes, you're not going to like the news. I was like, okay, what's up? She goes, um, we got a letter from the IRS asking for more documentation. I was like, oh, I, like, okay, no big deal. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get it for them. And then I sent it to my amazing EA and enrolled agent and CPA Bob Langworthy, his team, Langworthy. sent it to them. He goes, 
I said, so is this just like a letter requesting more information or is this what is actually an audit? He goes, no, that's an audit. I yeah. go, oh, okay. All right. I guess we're doing an audit. And so the cool thing was, is that in the beginning, right? Think of it in the first five years we were investing. If I had gotten a letter that was auditing the business, I would have been mortified. I would have been like, my life is over. The IRS is here to kill me. Right. Yeah. And, and now I look at it completely differently. I'm like, we enter it, we track all of our data. We put all of our data in. We have a CPA and analysts and an EA that then review it all. And then they put that final thing together. Then we send it in and then it's like, okay, well, it's now had six set of eyes to it. So we think we're in the right boat. Yeah. And so if they come back, right? And they go through that process and we provide them all the documentation, they come back and they go, hey, so here's an area that we still see an issue with. Okay. Well, six people didn't see an issue with it, but you do. So now we still have to address something, right? So the, I always used to view audits differently, but now that I'm in one, I view it just a little bit differently, which is I know that we're clean. I know that we do it right. I know we track properly and we have the uh, excellent people that look after that stuff, but it doesn't mean that out of the gate that everybody believes that you do it right, do it the right way and are clean, yeah. right? They still have to get that follow-up. They still have to get and say, because they didn't come back to us with a number. They just came back to us with, we need more information. So they didn't come back to us saying, hey, you owe all this money. They came back to us and said, hey, we just need more information on this stuff. So I yeah. look at it and I just say, that's something that, again, first five years, Mike, I would have been oh, uh, yeah. scared out of my mind. And now it's just kind of like, okay, well, I, I mean, <laughs> we're not aggressive. We we think we yeah. do it all right. But if we have to change something, we have to change something. But it's yeah. it's much more like, then I thought, I think it would have been a death sentence. Now it feels like I got to take the time to go, you know, fight, yeah. fight parking ticket or or something, right? Just very different. Yeah, it's funny. I uh, I've had I've had two kind of they mail you a letter saying you owe a bunch of money because this or that wasn't reported. Those were relatively easy to address. But when we started this, I think it was 2020. Um, I went through a full audit. An audit in 2020 was different because of the pandemic, right? So everything was over the phone and Zoom and all of that. Uh, but yeah, the, the audit took 15 months. Yeah, crazy. And um, it was just like like you got. I got a letter just kind of highlighting, I want to say it was four, it might have been five areas. And like you, I have a CPA. My, my CPA uh, is actually a lawyer as well. So that turned out to be a big win for me. Um, and basically what I had to do was... Uh, get my CPA engaged. And once I did that, I don't know if you know this, but the IRS couldn't talk to me anymore. The, I, the IRS had, well, I guess maybe because my guy's an attorney and I was represented, I guess maybe that's why. Okay. So so everything had to go that way once I got involved. So if you ever get audited by the IRS, realize that you could pay someone to, to uh, be that go-between. Because I think a Absolutely. lot of people- a lot of people get nervous, like they've got to do it. No, 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 no. I would highly recommend getting a professional involved. Oh, well, that's the whole reason that we pick Bob. Bob's exactly. an EA. He can, exactly. he can represent us. Exactly. So Bob is representing us now for me, because I want us to learn about the process, right? Mm -hmm. We are going to go through it with him. Oh, of course. With yeah, him. So you don't, but, yeah. You want to, you want to know what not to do or yeah if 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 document. for some reason yeah if for some reason there's something we need to do differently cool yep. but the news the nice thing is is i'm already paying for the experience exactly. so but now i have somebody that actually understands everything he's the one who filed the, or you know created the return and did the return yep. so i'm actually in all honesty i'm completely broken i'm kind yep. of looking forward to the process to understand okay yep. Are we going to get the check mark where everything was perfect or are we yeah. going to get something where they come back and they go, you need yeah. to do this part differently. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and either right. answer is okay. Right. But I, I exactly. think that, what I would tell you after having worked, um, having a deep, deep, deep audit is the IRS is um, at least the auditor, at least the, I can only speak to the auditor I dealt with. So maybe this is, but it, I thought it was a very fair process. I yeah. thought all the questions were reasonable. Uh, I thought the documentation we provided perhaps could have been better. 
uh, some of the paperwork or uh, one of the, like one of the light items was just a simple 10, uh, what do they call it? 1099 was missing. 10, 10, 1098 or 10, 10 and 98 for a property, 1099s for an employee. Or it, for it, an it, yeah. Contractor, contractor income was missing or not re or, or numbers were reversed or whatever. So that was pretty easy. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought the process was certainly stressful because you don't, you don't know the outcome, right? Sure. Um, it was fair. It was uh, the timelines they gave were, was fair, right? This again was in 2020, so it was even more probably delayed than, than normal. Yeah, I um, I think it's hard to call an audit enjoyable, but I don't. It wasn't the death sentence or prison either, right? It was yeah. it was it was kind of like a, I, I guess I'd call it a dentist visit. It's like you don't really <laughs> like it, but you know what? You can go have dinner after as well, right? So yeah, cut. Kind of and go and so the where we kind of are in that process is when we actually get back from our trip is when we actually have uh, the the first meeting. Mm -hmm. um, what was interesting was the things that they asked for. I see that we provided them, but we could have provided more. Yes, if that makes that's, sense. That's, oh, but exactly. Yeah, we, we we provided probably the bare minimum. Yes, but we could have done more. Yeah. So what, that's what I took away from it was what kind of like, well, like, well, you provided that. And then when I saw what we provided, then Bob was kind enough to remind me, he goes, the IRS doesn't get your depreciation schedule. Right. They don't actually get that schedule. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah. they just want to validate that what, what shows up in the report that they got yeah. is the actual depreciation schedule. So that, so that was the other thing too, is though, Mike, I know that you and I are both cut from the same cloth. Mine being a lot, quite a bit larger. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I know that we're conservative in how we do our taxes. Right? Oh yeah. I, I do not. Yeah. No, we, don't we, don't, we don't, we don't like away. poke the bear. We're not pushing, we're not tempting fate. We're just like, listen, if it's, if it's a reasonable ask, then yes. If it's anything where it's like, if I had to do this at any point, it's like, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing that. I don't and want so, that phone call. Yeah. Right. Right. But that's what makes, but honestly, that's what makes me feel so good about mm -hmm. the position that we're in. Right. Is that you see some of those people that um, there's a difference between risking everything and risking everything. Yeah. There's that risking everything where it's like, yeah, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket. I have to perform. I have to follow through. And then there is the, well, I stole my down payment. I yeah. hawked my grandmother's jewelry to get to where I am. It's like, when you look at all those things, right, there's a, there's a smarter, cleaner, better, faster way to get there. And that's what, that's where I really hope our businesses, I expect our businesses based on what we track and what we submit. So yeah. I believe that, but I'm interested to see if it comes back. The other thing that, you know, I said to my wife too, is I said, listen, if they come back and they say we owe $5,000 or 10,000, whatever it is. Okay. Write the check. <laughs> we, then we did something. Then we did something. Yeah. We didn't account for it properly. We write a check. Yeah, like, all right. That's all. Yeah, fine. Yeah. So, uh, this, I, I want to go back to something else you brought up earlier because I, it, there's a lot of get rich quick schemes. Yes. Yes. And real estate, because it has, has money and other people's money and seller financing and sub two and all of these other things. There's so many stories about, you can get rich in real estate with none of your own money. Yep. And you and I have done deals with none of our own money. Sure. We were, it wasn't our first deals. No. And, no. and we had money on the back to, you know, just in case. Yep. Um, I have a, like, it makes my skin crawl when I go to these events and I hear people talk about building a real estate portfolio with no money. Uh -huh. And Airbnb arbitrage, oh. Crawley, you know, the last couple of years, I'm like, oh my God. Now let's be clear. I think there's a play for Airbnb short-term rentals. Um, I just hated the gurus yeah, basically telling you to lease properties, furnish properties, probably without telling the landlord. And then you're going to sublet it on Airbnb in a community. I'm like, oh, this is just a disaster waiting to happen. I hate stuff like that. Burr is another one, right? Burr worked great from 2010 to, I don't know, 19, 20. Uh -huh. Then it got really, really hard. Yep. And it's just, 
getting rich, it, it's a process. I think you said earlier, what smooth is fast or slow, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yep. You just gotta, you gotta build your portfolio on purpose with intention. Yeah. And if that means you're like Dion and you want to, I love Dion's story. The more and more I hear it, I just love it. He decides to be a real estate investor. Doesn't buy anything for two years because yeah. he's doing the work behind the scenes. Got to clean up the mess. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It's okay. Yeah. You don't have to buy something tomorrow. You could be a real estate investor and own zero. You're doing the work. You're pairing credit, paying down debt, learning a buy box, networking, changing your friends. Oh my God. If I were to change my friend, just I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking this. Yeah. To the first point, change my friends. Yeah. I would have gone so much faster. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I, I lived, dude, I lived in an, ex, dude, I lived in an Excel spreadsheet for five years. What a yeah. moron I was. I'm <laughs> I mean, you're an econ guy. What do you expect? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm an econ guy that you know doesn't like people. So I lived in a yeah, spreadsheet. I, just, <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's, but that's the thing, you know, you look at it and, and again, I mean, as, as we built our business, I realized that I, I, I was far too focused on the five closest people I was fighting against them all the time. And they were my friends, but I was the punchline. I was the punchline yeah. for a good decade, which yeah, really, and again, is, you know, you know what people need to hear is you were the punchline as was I, but also sure. we all, we had bad stuff happen. Yeah. So we, were all, we were already perhaps in a dark place. Then you get a friend or a family member to come over and kick you in the shins. That's exhausting. Yeah. My, my grandpa, worked until he was uh, 76 years old mm. and then he finally had to retire. He wasn't a millionaire. He retired at 76, not a millionaire. Mm. He died at 94 worth just over a million dollars. The last 10 years of his life, he couldn't spend it anyway. And so it didn't really even matter. So what was nice was, you know, he, big family and, you know, disbursements and all that stuff was nice. Um, but at the same time too, I think he did it wrong. I think yeah. he did it wrong. He was 70, 70, worked until he was 76 years old. And then basically only at that point got to a point where he could then quote unquote retire. Mm -hmm. And then he does retire, but he didn't retire to anything. He retired, unless you consider, you know, making phone calls to the family and yelling at them are retiring. Yeah. <laughs> For some people, maybe. But, but yeah, no, but that, but that's what he did. And so you look at it and you're like, then when he finally had money, he couldn't even spend it in a way that he could enjoy it. It didn't even matter. It didn't even matter. And so for me, that was one of the things where I was like, man, I don't want that life. I don't want to have to work until I'm 76 years old wow. and hang on like he had to hang on. And sell his business for a fraction. I mean, it was, it was, uh, you know, some people like, oh, he sold his business. Yeah. He sold his business for like less than 50 grand mm. because so many of he, because he never evolved so many of his customers, guess what? They were dead or retired too. Oh. Oh. And so when you look at it, it's like, what is the, it made me at least think further on, like, when can I get enough and enough is enough. There isn't enough number. When can I get enough? And enough for me was, I really want to, I really want to love my job still. Okay. Well, I, I really like my job and I, I still like a lot of the people that I work with, but I don't love it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I really do love my kids and I really do want to spend more time with them. And I want to do more stuff with them. And so the question is, could I double again in the next 10 years or five years, five or 10 years? Could I double again? Sure. Probably but I don't think yeah. I want to. No, dude, I got to tell you, this is this, a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, I was concerned that you were going to try to double again, right? Yeah. You had, you were still working. You had mm -hmm. this vision, property management company spinning up. You're going to yep. do all these things. And I was like, holy shit, he's going to try to double this. Thing. <laughs> I'm like, I know we can do it, but you're, you're not. At what cost? Yeah. It's like, yeah. really? Yep. And one thing I got right again by luck is for five, the last five years, I basically sat down. Yeah. And I'm like, Agreed. this view is pretty freaking amazing. And even when yeah. you're sitting down, you can have little deals come here and there. Fine. Yep. Um, but yeah. But you still I, look at your market every day. 
every day. Every you still day look at morning. your market every day. You still look at it because you will still find that great deal that comes across, right? One a year. That's all I need. One a year. One a year. Yep. That's fun. We yeah. we we did uh four deals last year. Mm -hmm. But what I find I'm doing is I'm doing um weird deals. Yeah. So well, right? deals that only you can do because you yes. can you can put them together in different, and they probably have a lot like the, that. Uh, what would you call it? Retail place you bought? I don't know what you yeah. would call that. Yep. Uh, mixed use, I guess. Yep. I'm like, those are the kind of deal because there's a lot of lot of room, a lot of spread. Yeah. But it also is going to take a heavy lift. And I, that's the kind of stuff. It's like yeah, I'll do that deal. Well, it's I, heavy. It's heavy lift. It's heavy relationship. Yeah. It's having great contractors. It's having, you know, knowing, knowing what the plan can be like literally when you walk it, I'm like, mm -hmm. I know what I can do with this. Yeah. So uh, ironic. So I would say that what people will find later on in their career investing is that they will get a lot more home runs. Yeah. It, but they'll also swing less. It's, a, it's of course. amazing. You'll swing less, but you'll have more home runs. If that makes any sense. I agree. Your your odds of hitting a home run drastically improve every year that you're in the business and continuing to push and grow and learn. Yeah. You know, it's like everyone's like, "Well, I wish any of my deals hit twenty percent." Well, maybe after you've been doing it for ten years, maybe maybe most <laughs> of them. Will. Yeah, you can pay the price too. It just doesn't happen, right? Right. I, I think that's and this goes back to Warren Buffett quote. Uh, Warren Buffett talked about baseball, but he's like, "I don't have to swing." I can right. look at unlimited pitches. Yep. And wait for the one that I know I can hit a home run on. That's exactly and that's right. the one I'll swing. I'm like, that's genius. That's yep. genius. So let's bring this home. Again, we open this concept with getting rich or the process of getting rich sucks. Let's talk to those people, you know, kind of closing thoughts in that first five year period. Cause that's where again, I do think the process tries to knock you down. What's what's the lumberjack's word of encouragement for those people who are who are in the suck right now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we see them, your investment, you know, the group that you have one rental at a time, they're on Facebook. We see it, right? We see it posted yeah. almost every week. And let me first say, bravo to the people that post. Keep posting. Bravo to them. Community. Yes. Yes. That's that is the mistake that Mike and I both made in our early journey. Yeah. We didn't have support of others. We, the only person that supported us was the person we were married to. And they kind of had to, because they were, they were, they were the, they were tied they were to financially this. committed. Yes. They were tied. They were, they were all in. They were. Yes, yeah. Yes. So I think the, the thing that I would tell people is keep posting yeah. your concerns. Let, let the community be there to give you input. Let them give, be there to give you perspective. Um, You and I never take, you know, crap on somebody that posts like that because no, we, we remember We've it. Been there. Yeah. We remember uh, it. And yeah, we need yeah. that. There needs to be that community there of support because not everybody's stupid and broken. Like I am where I need five people telling me I suck and I can't do it for me to go. Ha ha. Um, I'll show you. <laughs> you, and you'll still have those people, but there are going to be those times of suck. And I think the big thing is, is look at it as an opportunity to improve. Number one, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, and really looking at the process and saying, how can I, how could I have avoided this? Can I make this better? That's absolutely going to be how you do that. And quite frankly, that's the reason both Mike and I did courses is because yeah. we're like, here's all the mistakes that we made. Here's all the things that we don't do now. And here's all the ways that we do them. And that's what makes it better. So I would just tell people, be encouraged and and post when you have questions. And even though, yeah. even when it, it's, it's humbling, Mike, I get where they're coming from. It's humbling to have to post something where it's like, I just hear of nobody doing anything but being successful. And now I have to post a massive colossal failure and I'm struggling. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, yeah post in the community. That's why it's there. It's private. It's only students. I don't let anybody else in. It's students yep. or speakers on the channel and you'll, you'll get nothing but encouragement. That's right. We, we have all been there. All. It's, it's the game of getting rich tries to kick you out. It does uh, build a portfolio with intention with the process, don't go fast. Fast brings risk. Yep. Learn the the big thing is learn the lesson, right? Did you not get that appliance looked at? Did you do a band aid versus replace? Did you miss an inspection? Right. Learn the lesson. That's yep. the big thing about the five years. If you change the mindset from oh crap that you know I'm going to go broke to what lesson can I learn? It's so freeing. And yes. 
plenty of lessons cost a lot of money. I get it. I've been there. I paid the price. Um, but it does it does get better. And it does. It's worth it. Does. it. The other thing, it's worth it. Guess who's got the best haha -ha now? <laughs> yeah. Haha. Haha. -ha. Ha -ha. Yeah, remember all those remember all those dumb events that I missed that no one can remember now? Remember all yeah. those? Yeah. Remember all those? Not one person can well remember the yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. 46 retired. I hope the same for everybody that they get to retire to something. And if you're starting later on in life, guess what? At least you're gonna have a real retirement at 65. You're gonna have options. Yeah. yeah. Optionality is where it's at. You know, because again, yeah. if you do the math real quick and you're and you're 40 right now or you're 45 mm -hmm. right now, add 20 years onto that. That's basically where I am. That's basically yep. where Mike is. Yep. Add 20 years onto that. And if you're even 40, 45, even 50. Yeah. Because all you need, all you need is four. Just yeah. four changes retirement. It just change, and that's the thing is, even at fifty years old, at ten years in, right? At ten years, it starts to get easier at five, but at ten, it's quite a bit easier, right? Oh yeah. Sure. So even if you start at fifty, at sixty, at sixty, you're still good, and you can probably still retire early. Look at Dion; he's ten years yeah. in or eleven. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree with you. I think I again. I just it's important. I don't think there's enough people talking about the suck. I agree. And the pain and the costly lessons and the bruises and the, and all the, just, it's part of the process, folks. I, if I can make it better for you, I would, but in reality, it's just part of it. You got, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy that. Enjoy that period. Right. Enjoy the, enjoy the suck. I, uh, think, we've, you, I, I think we've done all we could to pour ourselves into our courses to try and make it better for people. That's try. the point. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point. Where where can people find you? And we're going to blow up Instagram uh, over the weekend with people tagging us. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But where can it's they find It's going to be you? awesome. Yeah. So you can find me Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, now that I'm retired, when I get back, it's going to be a lot more a lot more posts with what we're doing in our projects because we'll be doing a lot of work there. But um, look forward to seeing everybody at the event. Um, and if you're not there, well, there's always the next one. We're going to have to go. convince Mike to do another one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at a hundred thousand yeah on that on that front i actually my this is what a successful event will be for me we're closing sunday right the, th the four of us are on stage mm -hmm. i plan to now again i could forget but i plan to ask the audience do you want to do this next year yeah I'll if the that. audience overwhelmingly says yes i've already told melinda that i want to book next president's day weekend um so my intention is to do this once a year. I think nice. I think once a year is doable for me. Um, and hopefully the community supports it. But we'll find out. Maybe it'll be a colossal failure and we won't do it. We'll see. I don't I don't <laughs> take, think so. I think we'll take care, brother. Thank you, my friend.